当你走进一家美术馆，驻足欣赏毕加索、马蒂斯、莫德里亚尼等现代艺术大师的作品时，通常会想到什么？是颠覆传统美学的创意表达，还是拍卖场上不断造就的数字神话？如果说有这样一种古老而神秘的艺术形式，曾深深启发了这些伟大的现代艺术巨匠，并永远改变了现代艺术的发展方向，你觉得它会是什么呢？今天，我想邀请你透过几件极为罕见的百万级艺术珍品，探秘非洲与大洋洲艺术的世界，与这个领域最顶尖的专家之一 Susan c l o m a n 女士一起了解这一小众收藏品类的鉴赏与投资之道。I'm so glad to introduce you to Susan c l o m a n Susan founded c l o m a n Art after a long time tenure as international director. For African and Oceanic Art, and Senior Vice President at Christie's. So lovely to see you again, Susan. See you, Karen. Thank you. Before we jump into the exhibition, I would like to ask you a question. How would you define or introduce African and Oceanic Art to someone who is not so familiar with this category? The way to describe this category for African and Oceanic Art is works of art that were made and used. For a continuous period of time within the cultures, mostly from the 19th and early 20th century. I think in recent years, African and Oceanic art continues to attract international attentions. We see major auction houses and galleries dedicating to specific sales and events to these art forms. If we look back in history, when did African and Oceanic art start to receive attention in the art market, and who is collecting it? I think that's an excellent question. I think if we were going to pinpoint one person or one moment、mm -hmm. when African and Oceanic art came to the forefront of the market, would be just after World War One and into the 1920s in Paris with a man named Paul Guillaume, who was a dealer in Paris. He was Modigliani's dealer at the heart of the modern art movement. Was the first one to start talking about African art as art and not ethnography. We wouldn't have modern art today. In the same way, without African art, because this is what Picasso saw in 1907 when he created Demoiselle d'Avignon. He went to the Trocadero Museum because Maurice de Vlaminck, the the painter, said you should go there and look at these these amazing sculptures. And he came out and he says, I knew what I had to do, and he created Demoiselle d'Avignon. I know this exhibition serves as a groundbreaking example to center on three masterpieces. Of African art, which were inspired by the moon. Please tell us more about it. I'm very privileged in my career to have worked with some of the most important works of African art that have come to market and have been lived in private collections. In this instance, I have these two moon masks, and at the same time, this beautiful Ashanti stool. It's a cosmological aspect that has never really been explored in African art. So I was bringing these three pieces together that have this. Lunar concepts, and I called it Ex Luna, which means from the moon, and it comes from the Apollo 13 mission, Ex Luna Scientia, from the moon knowledge. Since we are here standing in front of this beautiful royal stool, can you please give us a brief introduction about this beautiful piece? Yes, with pleasure. It's a royal throne from the Ashanti culture in Ghana. In Ashanti culture, there is the queen mother and the king. And the Queen Mother, in their cosmology and mythology, she is the daughter of the moon. Amongst the Ashanti, this isn't just a stool. This is an embodiment of the queen. It's full of symbolism. Even the shape of the seat, which is a crescent shape like the moon, and this is silver repousse, which is silver being the color of the moon. Whereas there's a lot of gold in Ashanti culture, and gold is the king's medal and also from the sun, symbolizes the sun. And what's important is that in Ashanti culture. The queen mother is primary. The king cannot exist without the queen,、mm -hmm. so she's first. And the moon is actually primary and center of the universe. As this is the embodiment of the queen, this is her soul. This is the core. This is the most important part. This central pillar.、Mm -hmm. And here we have the lunettes, and we have these triangulations end to end. In positive space and in negative space. This also is the moon. This is the full moon, surrounded by the waxing and waning moon here. This is very unique because it also has this X struts on either side, which are called the crux decusata. 
which is also symbolic of the queen because she it represents the equinoxes and the solstices, which are driven by the moon, of course. We only know two others that are in the museum of the British Museum and the Nelson Atkins Museum. Susan, you frequently give lectures on the subject of African and Oceanic arts and its influence on modern artists such as Picasso, Matisse, Modigliani, and Brancusi. So let's take this specific mask as an example. What was the function and how did similar works inspire those masters of modern art? This mask is a very rare example. It's called a moon mask by the Baule people, a Baule artist from the Ivory Coast, working in the 19th century. There are only five that are known of this quality and rarity. Quality being a master artist, someone who was a very technically proficient. This mask has a lot of precision, a lot of geometrization. We do know that they came out and they were the first ones, they were worn high like this, mm -hmm. and there would have been a, a cloth covering the dancer. It was used during different ceremonies. And this one has, in particular, a very high level of abstraction. The medial ridge nose here, the mouth which becomes just a square. Then we have the lunar symbols. We have the shape of the eyes, which are lunettes, the shape of the ears. It could represent a constellation of stars, for instance, and it's certainly in a crescent shape like the moon. What does this have to do with ballet aesthetics? Their art is about conveying beauty. And that means not only exterior beauty, but interior beauty. Because how are we supposed to behave? How are we become beautiful people? How do we become civilized people? Because when we first enter this world, we're wild spirits. Everybody's considered a wild spirit. So you have to be tamed by the societal norms. The ears are important. Represent someone who listens more than they speak. They listen before they speak. And that's also indicated by the small mouth somebody who doesn't speak or only speaks when necessary. The same with the eyes. They have a downcast quality, which conveys a sense of modesty and humility. How does a mask like this convey modern concepts as well? Well, again, it's this idea of abstraction. A pictogram of the human face, which symbolizes something else, something in the universe. In this instance, the moon. And also ideas of intangible ideas about behavior, and how to exist properly within society. And in a way, that's what modern artists were trying to do too, were to convey intellectual concepts, social critiques, through abstraction. This mask is one of the five that we know within this very small corpus of Baole moon masks, which are called Anglo Ba, amongst the Baole. And what's interesting too, in particular, is the complementarity of these two masks. They share a lot in common, which might mean that they were created in the same region. So the artists were working in a kind of atelier with similar concepts. Another aspect of Baole aesthetics is beautiful, healthy skin. So that's why you see the very shiny surface on these masks as well, with different mineral pigments and also kind of oils and buffed over time to create this shiny surface, which is so appealing, indicative of someone who's a very healthy person. There's a growing emphasis on promoting diverse narratives and voices within our art world, which has further contributed to the interest in African and Oceanic arts. Institutions and private collectors are actively acquiring and exhibiting these beautiful works of art. As the few expert, I want to ask you, what's your advice for beginners who are interested in collecting this category? Yes, well, I think that's a good point to say that there is a developing market for an appreciation for African art. Just as we've been talking about these masks or even the Ashanti stool, you unlock an entire culture in one image. You can appreciate it on just purely formal level or whatever you want to know, it unfolds. An entire culture can unfold before you with one image. Mm -hmm. So that's the sophistication and beauty of African art. Mm -hmm. It's endless what you can know about it. This market, even if it seems exotic by the subject matter, mm -hmm. in fact, it operates in the same way as every other market. Do your homework. See as much as you can. Go to museums. Work with good dealers and reputable dealers mm -hmm. so that you can really learn and figure out what your aesthetic is, what you like. Buy which the best thing you can at any given moment. Never compromise. <laughs>
honestly. Thank you, Susan. You really opened a new door for our audience. My pleasure. Thank you, Karen. This Thanks is wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.